What's going on, Cashflow Veterans? This is John coming at you with another episode. Honestly, I'm not really sure uh, even over the last month or so where exactly I'm at on episodes. I think it's number 22 or number 23. Uh, and number one, let me, just, let me apologize. I, I was uh, had a lot of changes over the last month, and I'm going to go into that a little bit. Um, and so I basically took the month of September uh, off, and I'm going to be reformatting how I'm doing the show a little bit. I, I really enjoy doing uh, the series for every single month. And I don't necessarily think that's a bad idea. I just think for me to make sure that I'm putting out more content on a consistent basis with everything else that's going on, it just makes a lot more sense for me uh, to actually just try to do um, a, a, a random topic. And, and not that it might seem random to you, um, but for me, I'm just going to make sure that it's going to line up with people that I'm able to line up as guests. Um, and it'll be more one-off episodes. And if there is, for whatever reason, um, you know, I'm doing like a series or something like that, I think what I'll end up doing is just batching that together where if I, you know, have your, your 30 minute episode or so or 30 to 45 and I need to do two or three, four of them, maybe I think all I'm going to do is just go right into uh, the weekend and just do the whole thing and then split it up like that. And then I might release uh, some of those like back to back uh, throughout the week in order to do that. Or I might space them out. It just kind of depends on what I can line up overall. Um, and that's just because of how busy that I've been uh, over the last month and how busy I'm going to continue uh, to be. So I, I did want to go ahead and get into that, I guess, because I want you, because uh, a lot of the stuff is, is for you actually specifically, and it's going to be something that is uh, beneficial in, in multiple ways uh, for it. So uh, <clears throat> the first thing is I was, when we moved here last year, when we moved to, to Omaha, Uh, let me let me back up a little bit more, actually. So I decided to get out of the military back in 2017. Um, technically, I probably made that decision when we PCS in 2015 uh, to leave the Air Force. And I just wanted to get another two years of teaching and instructing and just trying to pass on, um, you know, coming out of maybe what a lot of would consider a bad situation um, and trying to go back to some of the newest members of the Air Force who are going up to do nuclear weapons and giving them the best possible realistic but positive message and mindset going from a brand new missileer to being a uh, to being a a knowledgeable missileer but also somebody that has their head kind of screwed on straight not that not to say that I uh, was the one necessarily doing that I just wanted to be somebody that was there as a positive reinforcement uh, for them to be able to grow and develop as leaders, as officers, and as missile leader and, and missile operator professionals. Um, and I wanted them to be able to create a culture uh, that they wanted and, and do that. Now, I wanted to be a part of that. and But I had decided to get out before I even, you know, PCS. So even as I was going from Montana to California, that was one of the things that uh, specifically I – had in the back of my mind already. So I, I, I basically decided to get out. So when I did get out in 2017, I wasn't a hundred percent sure what I wanted to do. You know, I have a, a background in entrepreneurship and other ideas and stuff. And I love reading. Um, I, I'm, I'm really good at putting concepts together and ideas and then breaking them down uh, into, you know, for what I do now, breaking them down into products and then talking about the features and the benefits and, and then selling that to somebody but I'm able to take these ideas and also the connections I have with people and really either try to put the right person with uh, another group of people uh, and connect those people together uh, on, on common interests, but also um, being able to take some of those ideas that somebody might have, show them some other things. And so I've been kind of a generalist and I, I tend to you know, spend a little bit of time here and I'll dive deep into a topic, but then I'll kind of get bored with that and move on to the next topic. I like to, there's one, uh, TED talk that's out there that calls that being a multi potential light where you actually like dive in um, very focused for a certain amount of time. And then it kind of uh, relaxes you, you relax back from it and then you actually go into something else. But it's interesting because there's a culmination of experiences that are there where the learning process that I have, I've been able to, um, I don't want to say shortcut, but I certainly have been able to learn a certain way. I have a skill of being able to absorb information uh, quickly and then applying it as well, which allows me to kind of understand when somebody comes to me with a, a project or a product or whatever the case might be, I can then quickly flip that around 
and show them the possibilities. But I'm also a huge encourager and I want people to have expanse. I want them to expand, to accelerate, to get their life moving forward in whatever facet that they're looking at. What, you know, for cash flow veteran, that, that's their personal economy, you know, their health. Are they sleeping all right? Are they eating the right things? Are they taking the right supplement, uh, supplements that their body specifically needs? Um, are, are they uh, looking at their finances correctly? Are they applying themselves in a way that is going to expand their overall income? And are they redeploying that back into vehicles that matter, that are going to reinforce everything that they're doing, but also set the basis for whether that's paying off debt or more specifically, making more money, earning more money, reinvesting that capital um, in starting business and, and, and being an entrepreneur and driving forward and having it being the simplest point possible. And so that's, that's what I wanted to create with Cashflow Veteran to begin with anyway. So when I look at what's kind of been going on over the last few years, I, I even though that was the mindset that I had, that's the background that I had, I was still trying to find exactly where it was that I was going to go. And I wasn't a hundred percent sure I ended up working as a contractor for a few months right out. And I think part of it was just the unknown. I think a lot of people have the fear of going from working in the air force to the civilian world. And a lot of people uh, work for contractors or government employees and, and not to knock any of that, but for someone like myself that had this just entrepreneurial itch, the seed that had gotten planted, um, I wasn't quite getting that in the Air Force. And I think that uh, most people can probably understand that as well. And so I needed to apply that somewhere. But I felt like, I, again, with, with me diving one way and then you know backing out and then diving into another, I, I liked moving around in the military. And that was kind of nice. Um, or moving different jobs and being able to continually apply myself. Um, <clears throat> but what was interesting was I really wanted to um, – I really wanted to expand myself and anybody that knows me knows I love real estate investing and other topics that are, that are out there that deal with entrepreneurship. But I, I, I felt like there's part of me holding me back that I just didn't know what I didn't know. And I wanted to move forward with it. But at the same time, I kind of wanted the safety and security of having the job. But in my mind, I'm kind of straddling uh, the fence there. I, I was, I had one foot in and one foot out and I wasn't quite sure. So for me, you know, staying in and even going into the reserve from 2017 to 2019, and I, I, in a lot of ways kind of held me back. And as I look at back at it now, there's certainly lots of things I could have learned, but I'm actually very, very happy with where I ended up um, with the, the current uh, job that I have. So anyway, so over the last month, uh, let's say, so there, there's been some other places that I've worked, but I, I was working at a phenomenal gun range uh, that's here called 88 Tactical. They do a phenomenal job of uh, training and education, but just, it's kind of, a, it's a country club. It's a way that you can go in and uh, get the country club feel, but it's based all around the training and education of firearms. Uh, and it's awesome. I love it. It's, it's, it's a really, really cool place. Um, but it wasn't quite from a professional standpoint, wasn't giving me what I really desired, even though I had some projects that I was trying to do. So um, I ended up happening to find a, a job uh, on LinkedIn. And the thing that really drove me to it was uh, 10X. And so I've studied Grant Cardone quite a bit before. Um, and again, you know, being able to apply it around other military members, there's very much this a, a difference in mindset, let's say, with those uh, <laughs> and how you would grow, especially with having a family and then trying to make sure you're doing everything. So for me, I had to get all the way out and I went and applied to this job and it has been the perfect fit. And so now I am a sales and marketing manager for First Direct and First Direct Inc., First Direct Marketing and National List Services. And the core of our product is uh, is data. So data lists. So if you need a list for real estate investing, if, you, if you're an insurance agent or a wealth advisor or you work at any other company, at the end of the day, you need to understand your customers. You need to get new customers. You need to service the ones you have. And the new products you come out with, you want to increase the frequency or increase the value in what you're serving uh, those customers as well to really grow your business. So I still have the mindset of growth, um, but I like being able to come behind it with the data perspective to provide that. And that's the fuel that actually drives all of the marketing. So it is a data but and a marketing company. So while we have the data piece that's there, and we have a, a phenomenal data file for like email. So if you have email marketing campaigns that need to get sent out, we can take that in and just push that out to as many people uh, with high quality emails with really good open rates. 
um, honestly, way above the standard of what people are currently getting that are in the email marketing game. Um, and that's kind of the core offer is that data piece. And it's not just any list, but it's your list. Your list is what we really excel at and understanding it and making sure we get it right. And then putting that into the next step, which is some sort of outbound campaign, whether you're going to be on the phone dialing, whether you are going to be sending voice messages uh, on their uh, voicemails, whether you're going to be doing text message campaigns or emails or direct mail, whatever that case is, we can then roll that right into it. Uh, beyond that, I mean, those are really the outbound strategies, but what do you do with that? I mean, you have some call to action where they're going to be coming back to you in some way. Well, the thing is, is you got to have something that's going to be able to really capture. You got to be able to reach out uh, into the world with your marketing, uh, throw out the lure a little bit. And when you get that person that is saying yes to you, you need to find a way to kind of capture and cultivate and grow and nurture that experience for them, for you, and to make sure that you're providing the best possible service that you can uh, to do that. And we do that with full spectrum, omni-channel behavior-based marketing. Blah, 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 blah. I know that sounds uh, just a, a huge word salad that's in there, but it's really, I've been trying to find a whole lot of different ways to really break this down without, because we quote unquote, do everything, but we're not trying to be everything to everybody. We're trying to build relationships with business owners, understand where it is that they want to go, and then come up with a custom solution that gets them the results to get them where they want to go. So that's what I like about it is I'm not just throwing products at people, even though we do have packages and things like that. I'm really just trying to connect with the business owners that are out there and ask them where, where it is they want to go and then offer a solution to them uh, that is time effective, cost effective, but at the end of the day, yields the results and then look back at the information that we gave them, look back at the information that they have and test and then refine and test and refine and continue this process. But th the thing is, is it always comes back to data. And that's what I always try to, I'm really trying to push upon and impress upon the business owners that are out there is that cash flow is the lifeblood of your business. You have to have cash flow. You have to expand. You have to be moving. You, that heart has to be pumping. You have to be doing outreach. You have to be doing cultivation. All of it is important. There are some things that are more important than others. In my mind, sales and marketing and delivering that product are uh, two of the, of the most important things. You're outbound, dealing with people that are out there, cultivating the people that are inside and delivering the product. Those are, I would guess, maybe not two, but certainly three things that are absolutely vital to in this economy. The thing is, is the company that I'm with, we actually grew 15% this year. And that's crazy. With everything else that was going on, we actually grew because of the things that we were able to do and help others actually grow at the same time. And so we're not everything for everybody, whether you're a small, medium, or an enterprise level business. Do you want to grow? Is there a section of your company that you need to grow that sales and marketing can help with and that data can help with? That's what we do. Um, so that was kind of the first thing that I really kind of wanted to dive into real quick was to talk about what it is that I'm doing now uh, as a sales and marketer. So if you, uh, you yourself own a business and you need data, you need solutions, you need an email marketing campaign, uh, if you need a website built, um, honestly, there's some crazy things that we can do, which is pretty awesome. So when I say full spectrum uh, marketing or omni-channel marketing, so we can build a website that is behavioral based. So when you come in, uh, it it's designed in order to get you to do one thing on that website. And when you do that one thing, it, it automates the follow-up for it. So you could receive a mailer in the mail, a card in the mail, you could receive a voicemail if you've done certain things on the website. And it's just a way to continue having those touches and to, and to engage the people that are there. So that's one avenue that we can go down. We have all the creative that's there. We have all the copywriting that's back there too. We have um, some women that work there that are just amazing at it. They're, I mean, I mean, I've been trying to do some of the stuff on my own and the fact that they can just throw stuff together so quick. I'm just like, man, I don't have to worry about that anymore from um, trying to own my own company with digital marketing. I don't have to worry about that. I can just, you know, I can just pitch the product. I can just understand the customers. I can just connect and do what I do best um, and, and get in front of people and connect with people. And, and that's where I've really loved working with them uh, even just over the last month or so. Um, I mean, we can go all the way down in a granular level. Just think about this for a second. We can go all the way down to a person's device level. We don't have all of their data. 
um, like their name, their phone number, all that. We're not out there spamming a whole bunch of people. And that's one thing that we, uh, I think, really excel at is making sure, number one, we're following the law. But number two, we're actually giving a good customer experience. Even though we have to do outbound prospecting, outbound marketing, uh, we still have to uh, make sure that we're providing a high quality experience for that too. And that's one of the other things that we really excel at. But, you know, let's say that we could, you know, geofence, basically, if your device happened to be, you know, in a certain area of one of our clients, and they wanted to be able to market to you in some way and give you a high quality video, audio, email message, whatever the case might be, or, or, an, or deliver an ad to you. It's not just Google, it's not just Facebook, but literally, um, as soon as we kind of hit some parts of that on the phone, uh, if there are certain apps that you have activated, one of the cool things that we can do is drop um, a, an ad that's local for you in that app that you're using. So where your eyeballs are already at, we can actually drop that right in there for you. Um, so think about that from a business perspective. I mean, the fact that you can engage them where they're already looking in places that they have affinity for, like the apps that they like to use throughout the day, um, we can hit that. And the other thing is once they get home, possibly we can even, uh, if they have their smart TV, they're watching Hulu or their other streaming services, um, however, they're engaging with some of that stuff. I mean, there's native ads, there's billboards, digital billboards for that type of stuff too. I mean, you know, not just the retargeting when, you know, you speak something and uh, Alexa picks it up and then they, you know, target you. I mean, that's a little, a little bit crazy, but if it's the right offer, I mean, that, that that's just simple retargeting. We're not just doing simple retargeting on Facebook, on Google for those types of things. Or when you go on a website, it has all the banners for stuff. I know when I started the, doing the 10X challenge with Grant Cardone this last week, um, they, uh, you know, I was getting, I was getting ads of his like everywhere, which, you know, it's totally fine. I love Grant Cardone. Um, you know, it's funny cause there was an ad for his store. I was like, Oh, I haven't looked at his store. I've been meaning to do that. Click. So I went ahead and clicked on there and, and, and looked at a few hats, looked at more bracelets, you know, different stuff like that. Um, so if you can offer the, the right thing at the right time, um, that that's really what we do when we refine that. And we find whatever way makes the most sense to offer a high quality user experience, uh, for your potential customer. So that's what we're doing. That's the level of what we're doing. But at the end of the day, cash flow is the lifeblood of your business. Data is the DNA. So it all, even though we offer all that stuff, it always comes back to the data uh, every single time. I mean, it's super, super important to understand it, to validate it, uh, and, and to make sure that with that data, with that behavioral, um, with the demographics, the psychographics, making sure that we understand the customer and know how to serve them in a way um, that actually makes them uh, feel and know that they're being taken care of and not just that they're getting pitched for stuff all the time. <clears throat> so that's the first thing that I wanted to talk about real quick. And if it wasn't already busy enough, just starting a new job as a sales and marketing manager, uh, Jackie and I actually went ahead and started another business. So, hey, <laughs> Let's just throw something else on our plate as well as being uh, parents and, and having full-time jobs and everything else. And, you know, she still does photography on the side uh, for stuff too. So, and, and we're not a hundred percent sure on the name because one of the things that we wanted to make sure that we did was that if we're inviting people into our space, it's not just about a certain product, a certain business or whatever the case might be. When we're bringing somebody in, it's about making sure that they are, living a life that they want to. And we want people that, that come in with a mindset of, I want to be here because I want to grow. You said you would hold me accountable. So hold me accountable. And that's what we want. And, and it may be from, you know, a business perspective. Um, we're certainly inviting as many people that want to come join our, um, our organization to certainly do so. Um, but that's not, that, that's, that's on down the road for us. What we're creating is something that has a different mind, well, not a different, but a, a, a mindset that is, I'll put it this way. We're creating a very specific brand that is to help you get better every single day. Very similar to what I'm doing with cash flow veteran, but this is going to be expanded for, for everybody. And it's going to have much more of a health and wellness kind of focus to it. Um, Jackie and I have been athletes most of our lives. We've been on this nutrition kick for a long time as a lot of my previous episodes have kind of leaned into a little bit as well. And so um, we're just really passionate about that to begin with. So I want to start cataloging people's stories and people that need help to be held accountable for uh, a workout they need to do, how they need to eat, if they're trying to get their finances. So uh, before I, I'll, I'll pause, you know what? Let me just explain what it is that we're doing. So, and you can go to cashflowveteran slash idlife.com. Um, 
to actually see that. Actually, it's cashflowveteran.idlife.com. Um, and, and you can check out the, the site. And that's the supplementation. It, it's one of the things that we're currently doing. We have uh, personalized vitamins that are based on our DNA. And that's the one thing that I really, really push. And, and uh, Brandon Groney on one of the episodes, he's the one that really introduced us to this idea. And I'd been looking, we spent over $3,500 on different DNA tests and blood tests to find out what I'm allergic to, uh, what is my what is my DNA saying, what I love about the health assessment, and then the DNA assessment uh, from ID Life is that it really hones in on what it is you need to be doing day to day for your health and wellness overall. Um, so that's kind of just to show, tell you and be upfront with you, that's what we're doing. But one of the things that we're trying to do is expand, not just supplementation, not just the DNA, but specifically, how can we hold you accountable for uh, eating right? How can we hold you accountable for uh, working out the appropriate way? Because it does go into some of that there. Um, with Cashflow Veteran, I want to bring in some of that into what we're, what we're building as a brand um, together with that, because I think that the financial mindset is very important. I think that the overall mindset is really important. And so let me go back. So when I was applying to a master's program for entrepreneurship at Oklahoma State University, um, I was switching from a mental health counseling to entrepreneurship. And one of the reasons why I was switching um, was because I have this desire to help people deal with the issues that they have, deal, get the blocks out of the way and really push forward for what they want. I, I'm very, very passionate about that if you can't already tell. So, but I, I wanted to do it as a business and I felt I'd be a little bit more restricted as a um, as a counselor, as a psychologist, as, as somebody that was steeped in that field, I wanted to be more of a life coach. And so one of the requirements in applying to this new program was that I had to come up basically with a business idea. And it was born out of what I thought would be necessary if I was moving. This is 2012 um, that I was switching. What would be necessary in order for me to go from that psychological background, that counseling background and going into the entrepreneurship space, how can I serve better people? Uh, how could I serve more people um, and give them a better product overall? And I was thinking holistically because we started really de- digging into holistic medicine and a lot of other stuff to see what other opportunities and options and stuff were out there. So <clears throat> my business idea basically boils down to this. It was a holistic wellness firm where a person could come in, they could get a very specific assessment on what it is that they need. And they had scores on all kinds of things. It could have been their overall health. And we would network with doctors in the area to help with some of the uh, health assessment for this person. Um, we, in the fact that we can test their DNA now is even better. Uh, and I think allows even greater opportunity to be able to do this as well, because it, it allows us rather than saying, do the keto diet or do this diet or do that diet. We can say, no, this is what your body needs. This is what all the best research currently says that you need in order to affect the outcome that you want. So while they might be people that are coming in with certain health ailments or the certain uh, financial ailments, whatever the case might be, we could bring them in. We could look at their finances, look at their health, look at their mindset, get into the psychology and the counseling to get just muck out any of that stuff that's there that, that they feel like is holding them back. Because sometimes their financial problems and their health problems deal with, with, deal with trauma in their life. At, at any point in time, whether you're a, you know, a veteran that, that had to go down into the shit for, for years and years at a time, going on a rotation again and again, you saw some stuff that, that you just can't get out of your brain and having to deal with that. I mean, my goodness, how many veteran suicides do we have to have every single day, every single year to understand that, to understand that sending people with uh, brains that aren't fully formed yet into situations like that, it can be a problem can be a huge problem, can be such a problem that more people have died from suicide than from actual combat. That's crazy. Other people can't even get past things that happened in their childhood, very, very traumatic things in their childhood. And all of that stuff manifests itself in their lifestyle later on, whether that's finances, whether that's that they indulge in drugs later on, whether that's they indulge in uh, pornography and what, you know, whatever the case might be, we want to deal with the mind. We want to deal with the body and we want to deal with the soul. And I'm not saying, you know, I'm a Christian, but I'm not saying you have to uh, prescribe to all the Christian tenets or become a Christian in order to do any of that. But no, what is it that is at your core, at your spirit? What's the essence of what it would make you uh, to make you push yourself spiritually to, to gain that sense of, I don't know, but let me explore. Let me read things. I, I, um, 
I identify more with, with Buddha. Let me read more uh, Buddhist type of text or whatever the case might be. Um, and, and I'm not a universalist. I certainly don't, you know, I, I don't want to mix those two things, but I want to meet somebody where they're at and push them in where they want to be pushed hold them accountable where they want to be held accountable. I want them to flourish. I want them to have the best life possible. And that means the mind, the body, and the soul. That's what we're trying to do. That's what my program I was trying. I was even going to try to to network with other uh, insurance agencies to see if somebody came into my wellness firm, they could get cheaper insurance. And even though they might, or they might have pre-existing conditions, but the fact that they're in, in my wellness firm that we have, health coaches, that we have fitness coaches, that they have a psychologist they're talking to, we've been networking with their doctor to understand the full picture of this person. We can also make it more inexpensive for them to do that. We could also, you know, if they want to change careers, we can help them change careers. We can help them learn how to do interviews with people. Very practical type of things to get people's mindset and framework of their life moving in a direction where they truly want it. And that was also trying to figure out what, what's your goals? What do you want out of life? How far do you want to go? The sky's the limit. Forget the limitations. Let's go back to, to thinking like a child and, and seeing the wonder that's out there. The wonder of what you could be one day. And let's take that subconscious. Let's drive that deep into your subconscious. And then your conscious mind will catch up. We can deal with the the negative things, whatever stories you continue to tell yourself during the day, we can deal with those. So while that might be the idea of what I was trying to push with uh, going into my my entrepreneurship masters, that's what I'm trying to bring to uh, this group. And that's why it's not, it's not just, not just ID life. It's not just supplementation. Although these things are very, very important. We've had lots of really cool success with them. Um, the energy stuff alone. I mean, I don't drink nearly as much coffee as I used to because this stuff is fantastic. Um, I've actually lost uh, close to, what is it? Seven to 10 pounds here in the last, I would say month and a half that we've been using it. Part of that has been me changing how I eat a little bit, but I'm just eating, having a protein shake every morning and then eating clean throughout the rest of the day with supplementation that helps me sleep better. That's the one thing for me that's been amazing is being able just to sleep better from the supplementation I've had during the day, being a little bit more active during the day, but then also they have sleep strips that help me go to sleep. And it's amazing. It's awesome. Um, So those are great, but those are supplemental, but we have to fix all the other stuff too. So even though I think this is a great, you know, possible business opportunity for people that are out there that want it, that want to show transformation, that want to show people's lives being changed. um, It's also just fantastic stuff for for you to be able to change your life as well. But we wanted that to be separate from also, I mean, they're connected for sure. But no one from what we're trying to push in in a health and wellness perspective, uh, the mind, the body and the soul, the the one thing that we're putting out there, we, we, there's no requirement for anybody to buy anything from us or do anything like that. We just want people who want to be there, who who know where they want to go, are looking on how to get there, but want to be held accountable. I love coaching in this way. This allows me to do the life coaching that I've kind of wanted to do, but doing it in a group of people that want to be there. That's what I wanted for it overall. So I started a new job. We started a new business, supplementation, and we're expanding that brand uh, quite a bit. So uh, I just wanted to quickly say, hey, I'm back. I'm going to be putting out more episodes. I'm going to keep pushing for cash flow veteran. I, I, I likely am going to be doing more stuff in the real estate investing and the, the REI education space possibly too. Um, there's some cool opportunities that I think are going to be coming up with the job that I currently have um, to expand into some of those. Um, and now that I'm back in the 10X community as well, which is awesome, um, I'm, <laughs> it's, it's really pushing me to stretch and to really – um, be the, the person that I know that I can be. And I'm actually now that day to day, I'm around people that think like that. Um, it's amazing. And I, I really hope that I can bring more people into that circle from what we're uh, currently doing for with Jackie and I, but, uh, you know, also if you're a business owner that's out there, um, I, I would love to be able to help you. So I'm going to conclude this episode real quick. And there's two things that, that I just wanted to introduce to you. And that's this, if you're a business owner, you know, somebody out there who is a business owner, Um, you can have them reach out to me uh, at my new job, specifically if they have data needs or they have marketing needs. And I just want to start a conversation. 
Um, it's first direct out of Bellevue, Nebraska. You can, I'll have it in the comments, uh, in the podcast notes and, and on YouTube as well. Um, but if you want to have a pin ready, it's going to be J Payne, J P A Y N E at first direct marketing.com. They can email me or they can give me a call or text at four zero two four zero three zero zero one three. Again, J Payne at first direct marketing.com four zero two four zero three zero zero one three. So you can reach out to me. Let's get something started. Let's get something rolling for you and just start a conversation overall and let's build a relationship. So that's number one. Number two, um, you can reach out to me through the podcast. You can do a voice memo. You can do anything that you want to do uh, in that regard. Um, or you can just email me at cashflowveteran uh, at gmail.com, cashflowveteran at, e- at gmail.com. Um, when you email me there, um, I'll be able to take whatever question you have. Um, you can also, um, there's a number of ways you can message me. You can DM me on Facebook, um, on LinkedIn, on uh, wherever that you find, you have uh, cash flow veteran stuff, wherever you have my information, you can reach out to me uh, for um, the DNA, the ID life. I, I just really, really encourage people. You can take a free health assessment. So if you just want to get that out of the way, just go ahead and do that. And, but we also have the DNA and I highly, highly recommend it. It's like 200 bucks. Like I said, we spent $3,500 on stuff, 200 bucks. This is amazing. It, it, it gives you a ton, a huge report on how to go through that stuff and what you need to be doing day to day. That's cashflowveteran.idlife.com that you can go to kind of check some of that stuff out. Again, that's cashflowveteran.idlife.com to check it out or email me at cashflowveteran at gmail.com. All right, with that, I'm going to conclude the episode. Thanks so much for showing up. Again, I'm back. More episodes to come. I have some other guests that are lined up. You'll get more, I guess, uh, solo episodes for me coming up too. Um, I do want to eventually talk about some of the politics that's going on um, or at least make fun of it all. (laughs) Either way. But with that, I'm going to sign off and I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy.